I'm standing on the front porch of our home. We have a family of nine, almost 10. And one of the ways that I have been able to stay on top of this home is minimizing more and more over the years. Really becoming familiar with what can go so that in every situation I can't have a mess that can get beyond me. It's my number one way for staying on top of the housework here. So I wanna take you on a tour. I'm gonna to share with you some spaces I don't usually share like inside drawers and closets and just show you how we stay organized with seven kids, what that looks like, what we could improve on and what my habits are that have gotten here. So let's go in. First space I'm gonna take you in is the kitchen. We're gonna go into the kids' room, the living room, all of that. We live in a 20, I can't remember if it's, I believe it's 2,400 square foot home. I don't know if that counts the mudroom. But anyways, I'm gonna take you on all of it. Let's start here in the office slash pantry area. This is probably one of the least minimalist spots. And you know, minimalism really, I don't know if I could possibly be defined as a minimalist in any way. What I really mean is getting rid of everything in this house that doesn't serve a purpose and just keeping it as lean as possible while still working for our family. There is definitely some stuff that could still go, but I do feel we have it at a pretty good place. And this will depend family to family on the capacity. So whenever we had less kids or if you have kids who are more naturally organized, that is definitely a thing then you probably can stand to have more things without feeling like you are constantly cleaning up. Whereas if it's a struggle for your family and you feel like just staying on top of keeping the house tidy is a constant thing and you just can never go on top of it, that's when you know that you have too much stuff. Your home does not have to be that way no matter how many kids you have. I'm truly convinced of that. Just over the last several years, basically on how it used to feel to keep this place clean and in order and then how it feels now, after implementing some of these habits, it, it makes me know that it just doesn't actually have to be that way, even if you have a large family. So this side here, I have kids' games. These are not super organized. Again, there are probably some that could go, but this feels manageable. I don't feel like I'm constantly cleaning up games. Now, if I ever do feel like I'm constantly cleaning up games, that's when I know that a lot of these have to go. This top cabinet is mostly empty. The top shelf has nothing on it. The bottom shelf has one basket. It has kids' headphones and tablets that we don't let them have. Last time we used the tablet and headphones that are in there was when we were going on our trip to Hawaii, and so we had a long airplane ride. But I like to keep that pretty much out of reach. I don't have any plans to put anything in that top one, and that's okay. I don't have to fill up every space. This middle section here is office, so computers, cameras, various things that go with my business, shipping supplies, packing tape, envelopes, stamps, all of that kind of stuff. It doesn't look super organized right now, and there are a few things that need to go off the bottom, but at least I know what's in there. Bottom is stuff that's charging, <laughs> always. A robot vacuum, and so it's always a little bit of a mess next to that. That's pretty much it. It's it's open other than that. Bottom on this side is two printers, paper, and extra ink. Okay, the far cabinet here, I have flour, sugar, various baking items. I have baking dishes, some of my larger ones that I don't get into a ton. This makes sense because it's close to the kitchen and so it's more pantry space. And then I also reclaimed the top shelf for cake decorating stuff. We have muffin liners up there. So just that kind of stuff that like, I could hardly reach it. Arguably that could probably go if I was a true minimalist. But the great thing about it is kids can't get into it and get it out. So it doesn't really cause much harm. The problem is whenever you have a lot of things that a lot of people get a hold of and then having to constantly like, shuffle things back to where they belong. All right, I'm taking a break from my home tour to tell you about today's video sponsor, Birch Living. Birch is a natural and organic mattress company. It's very important to me, I started doing some research on this several years ago, to make the space where me and my family sleeps, one that doesn't have off-gassing, which happens in the conventional manufacturing of mattress and mattress products. 
because we spend so much time of our lives asleep. For adults, that's a third of our lives. For babies and kids, that's even more. And Birch is a company that I know I can trust with the materials that they have in their mattresses. We have three in our home, queen size, that is the Lux, and then and in the boys' room, two of the regular Birch mattresses for their twin size beds. Unlike synthetic mattresses, the wool in these mattresses make it hypoallergenic. It's allergen and mildew resistant. I know that the mattress I'm sleeping on is made with natural and organic materials sourced straight from nature, which are both comfortable and durable. It's free from polyurethane foams, doesn't release dangerous emissions in the air, and best of all, super comfortable. Now the Lux mattress is comprised of eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. The best part about all of this is Birch delivers mattresses right to your door for free in the US. It comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set up. Birch offers a 100 night sleep trial and a 25 year warranty so you can be confident that you are getting the most comfortable mattress that will last you for a really long time. I love my Birch mattress and I think you would too. If you are looking for a new bed, check out Birch Living. They are offering Farmhouse on Boone viewers 20% off plus two free EcoRest pillows with my link, birchliving.com forward slash farmhouse. It'll also be linked in the description box below. This here, this cabinet, is where we keep spices, glasses to drink out of. I also keep supplements that I'm currently taking in here in a basket. And then in the bottom area, I have more pots and pans, which is really nice because it's really close to the stove. On the top, I have a picnic basket that I keep additional supplements or medicines that we don't use often. Some first aid stuff up there as well. Obviously this cabinet, there's a lot in it that could go. It's harder for me to get rid of things like plates because for my job, I do a lot of food photography. And so there are random things in here that I wouldn't otherwise keep. And then I have these drawers here next to the stove. The top one just has various kitchen utensils. Then I have pot holders, foil, parchment, that kind of thing, Ziploc. I use these nonstop and I'm glad they're next to the stove. Then I keep bowls, strainers, and funnels down here. All things I use all the time. With a lot of these drawers in here, my goal is that everything fits without having to shuffle it. I recently got rid of a whole bunch of bowls because I couldn't fit things in it anymore. That to me is when something becomes a problem and so I just get it down to the bare necessities. All right, we keep cleaning products in here. And then this drawer is a mess, but we don't really fold. It's just all of our stuff to wash and dry dishes. And then we also throw water bottles in here. Then we have silverware, cup measures, my baking drawer, and our Pyrex drawer. This is where I store grains, coconut oil, bulk honey, and then we have the pantry, which I've shown on my channel thousands of times. Not really thousands, but a lot. I have my Bannerton baskets for sourdough, milk jars because we have a dairy cow, a little bit of food storage, which Luke and I got to thinking these freeze dried eggs should probably be stored in that top cabinet above the games. Behind these doors, we have our espresso machine food stocked up in here. And then these bottom cabinet doors here have some of my lesser used appliances like ice cream maker, blender, the things that I use, but not every single day. I put things back like my Instant Pot. It's currently out for making yogurt, but I will put that back. I've done quite a bit of eliminating in the pantry. So like, for example, I had a bread maker that I used to develop a sourdough bread machine bread recipe. But then after showing people how to do that, after writing the recipe, I found that in, for me personally, I would rather use my Bannerton baskets and Dutch oven. So I gave that to my sister and she absolutely loves making bread in the bread machine. So I'm constantly reevaluating what goes in there. The goal is that everything that I have fits down there. I don't want anything in the basement. I don't want anything in uh, super high, hard to reach cabinets unless I plan to use it very rarely. But these things that I constantly swap out on the countertop 
to use on a regular basis, like the Instant Pot, the blender, the toaster, I keep there. All right, let's head out of the kitchen and move into the main level bathroom. This bathroom has a lot of functions. It is a laundry room, it has a bathtub, it's the guest bathroom, and it's the bathroom that everyone in this house uses most often. So I have to keep things pretty minimal so it doesn't get out of control. This is also where I always do my hair, my makeup, now this vanity was converted from an antique dresser and the top doesn't have any storage because it's a sink base, but then we converted the bottom two drawers to have a lot of storage. It really helped when I started putting organizers in there. So I just have it by hair stuff, teeth stuff like extra toothpaste, a spot with body stuff, face stuff, deodorant, and essential oils. So that's how I get organized and it actually works pretty well for us. Now this closet here, we just have diapers. That's There's a whole basket of diapers and wipes because we use this washer as a changing table. That was Luke's idea and it works great. And then we have cow rags in a basket, which that just means all the rags that we designate for cleaning the cow before milking. And then I have a basket of towels that is actually overflowing, so that should get <laughs> reduced down. But what happens in our house is People don't really bring towels to the other bathrooms until they're about to go take a shower or a bath. And so there's very few towels in the other bathrooms, which we have four total, and they kind of just all get housed here. So that's just an issue of getting them shuffled throughout that we don't usually do because they come out of the laundry, they go in here. And I have a few extra laundry products stored up here, like extra bleach, OxyClean, extra detergent and then extra shampoo and conditioner because this is where I wash my hair, right over here in this bathtub and I keep shampoo and conditioner on the windowsill. Since this is also Luke's main bathroom, he keeps stuff in those baskets. I'm not gonna show you all of that. It's like his contact stuff, razors, those are his baskets. Actually, one of them is light bulbs. It's kind of random, but it's just the spot we've always kept light bulbs. So one basket's light bulbs, the others are Luke stuff. Let's talk about kid spaces. This is where the most dramatic difference has happened for me. I remember whenever I was first a mom, I had one little girl and then two little girls and we had all the toys, whether it was from thrift shops or Christmas or the baby shower. Once those two little girls could start getting toys out for themselves, I found that I was spending a half hour, an hour, tidying every single day at least. And as the years of motherhood ticked by, I noticed that the kids didn't really do a whole lot of meaningful play with most of their toys. They actually just got them out and they would lose pieces and then I would stress myself out over trying to match back up all the pieces. So if you have a toy that has seven, eight pieces to it, getting those all back together was something I constantly did and then I noticed the, the child wasn't even really playing with it. So I started to think, why on earth am I spending all of my time stressing about a toy that they don't even care about? And that's where I've landed. And so I do have these spaces very, very minimal. And I know for some of you, you're gonna think too minimal. But those of you who have a lot of kids and you feel like it's just constant chaos and mess, I'm here to tell you that this makes all the difference. So in these rooms, we have Legos. That's one thing the kids meaningfully interact with. What I love about Legos is you can lose a Lego or two and the whole set's not ruined. So it's not one of those toys where you spend all of this time stressing out having all the pieces because if you don't have all the pieces, they can't play the toy anymore. Legos and Duplos aren't that way and my kids can play with them for hours. Everybody's personality is different. So this might not be the case for you. Maybe your kids don't love Legos, but there's something else with the same parameters. Like you don't have to keep every last piece in order for it to be useful. They actually engage with the toy. They use their imagination with it. That is what happens with Legos. I have, all of my boys are interested in Legos, but I have my oldest boy. He doesn't even necessarily need the sets. He just comes up with robots and vehicles and all kinds of scenes with these Legos. So I won't part with them even though they are a lot of pieces. We love Legos because they actually use them. I'm not against 
having toys and cleaning up after my kids and teaching them to clean up after themselves. I just only want to keep it if they actually play with it in a meaningful way and that is the case with Legos. I also have a sewing machine in this room because that same son, he loves to sew. Some of my kids hardly play with toys at all. I have three more boys in this area here who don't play with any of these things very often. It's mostly just the one who does. They spend most of their time outside as long as it's not extremely cold. And the main benefit to them is these rooms are really easy to keep clean. We have two beds in each room, two quilts, a rug, and then just a few toys, a bookshelf because we do like to read books. And that's another place where in some ways I feel like we could eliminate. The thing with the books is if you cannot drive yourself crazy with wanting to keep them perfectly organized and you can just say, hey, go put away all your books and they're on the shelf, maybe not in the perfect way or by category. If you can get over that, then books are actually really easy to have because the kids can clean them up so easy. It's very straightforward. I do always say spines out, you know, that kind of instruction. But even if not, if they're just on the bookshelves, the room feels clean to me. Now, if that ever becomes an issue where I feel like I'm cleaning up books too often, I've toyed around with the idea of minimizing on that a bit, but it is really nice to have a collection of books. Other thing that we're very minimal about in our home is kid clothing. Each kid has definitely less than 10 outfits per kid. I can fit each child's wardrobe except the girls, which they can manage things completely on their own because they're older, in one drawer per kid. Or in a lot of cases, I have one large drawer for their clothes and then one small drawer for jammies and undies per kid. So there aren't endless options. I switch clothes out seasonally so that way a child can't really grab something that is the wrong thing for them to grab. I try to make it to where the outfits will work for most occasions. This is how we stay on top of laundry too. I never have an overwhelming mountain of laundry and that's just because we don't have enough clothes for that to happen, which of course, if you're a once a week laundry person, that wouldn't work. For me, we do laundry every day and it's just a whole lot easier to majorly minimize the clothes. We don't have closets here in this house. And so having just a small drawer or a basket per kid works great for us. The other boy space has even less as far as toys go than the other one. That's just because of how it's used. The boys who sleep here mostly like to play outside and with other things. It just has a rug, a couple couches because there's a couch in here that we need to get rid of and I haven't quite figured out what I wanna do with it, but it's actually really nice for reading to them at night. Two beds and two quilts and a dresser. It's very easy to vacuum clean the floors because there's just not much clutter. I brought this trunk from downstairs. It used to serve as our coffee table. I brought it up here, but again, it's not filled with anything because at the moment I am good with having storage options that aren't currently utilized. I know that there'll be something we'll wanna put in there, but at the moment, that's just not how this room needs to function. All we have in this closet is cat food, cat litter, litter bags, a couple towels, cleaning supplies, uh, some extra light bulbs for the lights in here. And then we have some empty shelves too, and I'm fine with lots of empty shelves. I don't wanna fill everything up in this house. My goal is just the least things people can get out, the easier it is to clean it all back up. Same in the shower, lots of empty shelves, just the basics. This entire thing is just empty. The other one has two brushes and this one's just empty. I was just looking at this dresser and I noticed that two drawers were all the way empty. Yes, this is a very repaired drawer. These two are empty. This whole side is empty. And then we have his art stuff up here. And then these four have clothes in them. So this kid particularly is a uniform kid. He just wears the same things over and over. Now also remember there's clothes in the laundry for all of these kids. Because of the way we do our laundry system here in our house, that is always the case. Because we have so few clothes, we oftentimes put everything in the washer, the dryer, and then into the basket for the appropriate room, the baskets that sit on the top of the dryer. And a lot of times we live out of those. So I would say their most worn clothes actually hardly ever make it up to the dressers. So if you think, how does this kid have any clothes? He does, they're just probably in the laundry, he's wearing them, then he has a few things in these four drawers here. Hey, I don't really remember what's in this dresser, so we're gonna figure this out together. <laughs> these are these moments where I think, 
do I need to declutter what's in here? Because whatever's in here, I haven't seen in a long time. Actually, hold on. I think a lot of this is homeschool materials because whenever we do homeschool, we get some kids on this desk and then one of the desks that's in the boys' room here. And so we do keep homeschool supplies in there, but I'm gonna see what all's in there. Okay. Yeah, homeschool books and maps. Okay, this has a random felt thing. I have a spot for that, so it's going with me. A random colored pencil. This carbon monoxide detector, I think I just need to plug that in whenever it's winter. I have a spot for that, so that's going. I do have a spot for that as well. So, that's now empty. And then this just has an empty art pad and trash so i guess it just has homeschool supplies and what i like about this is i now have two empty drawers for at the start of the homeschool season to fill with fresh new things okay this room here just a rug crib he has clothes in here and here this drawer I'm leaving open because I think I'm gonna move Theodore's clothes in here when the baby comes. And then extra crib sheets and mattress protectors. And then this room gets a bookshelf where a lot of books go, not just kids books. We have three bookshelves in this house and I'm not super organized about what goes where. That's one of those things that I could let drive me crazy and there's times I've been tempted to, like I'm gonna overhaul all of this. But I've settled on if books are on the bookshelf, then I don't really care where they are. There's not too many places to look. If you're looking for a particular book, you only really have to look in three spots and I'm good with that. I also keep diapers in here and then I keep our family books. I've done family yearbooks and the kids love looking at them in here. So they're separate from the other books. This room has a toy box, just a few random toys. Not super organized, it's just whatever makes its way up here goes in this toy box. Whatever toys make their way all the way upstairs go here, and that's the extent of it. And then this last room, it's managed by older kids. And so for the most part, I never step foot in here. Occasionally we do what I call a mom clean, where I help them decide what they need to keep if they feel like the room is overwhelming and hard to keep clean. We have big plans to redo stuff in this room. One of my kids wants to add a lot of color, so we have plans, it's just a matter of actually executing it to make this room a lot more exciting. The whole goal is that you can keep this room clean even if you only have five minutes a day or 30 minutes a week, that's the goal. It can't get out of control. I'm gonna pick up my finds here, get them all put away. Now this cabinet here, I have reorganized many times. It stays decent. I haven't organized it in a while now. It houses our craft supplies and then a few other random things like batteries, glue, tape, scissors, things of that nature. Now this little dresser in the entryway is something we added recently and we instantly filled the top drawer with wood stove things like gloves and this little broom that Luke uses to clean off the front and then a little hatchet because he makes pieces of kindling in the winter. And then he also has a weight thing there. So it's just a couple of random Luke items. And then the bottom drawer is empty. I think it functions pretty well because it's right next to the wood stove. We needed a spot to put things there. Maybe in the winter we'll put gloves and hats or something in the bottom drawer, but we mostly use the mudroom for that. So I'm again, good with having the options, but it being empty. A lot of our house looks very full and decorated, which is how I like my house to look but just because there are so many furniture pieces and art doesn't mean that I need to shove everything full of items. The bottom of the craft cabinet has sewing machines and extra fabric. And then I keep a few toy baskets at the base of the stairs. This is for any random toy that makes its way downstairs. So there are just a few collection points around the house, one being in the nursery room and then one at the bottom of the steps so I can easily stash things on both levels. Our farmhouse has one and only closet. It is a long, weird, awkward closet at the bottom of the steps because it curves around and actually goes underneath the steps 
Over the years, I've tried stashing a lot of things in here and it's just so not accessible that it's not really worth doing that because I can't get to anything. So it has become a closet to hang extra coats, bags and purses, which we don't have a ton of, and then vacuum, carpet cleaner, hardwood floor scrubber, just cleaning stuff like that and extra diapers. And then there's a few pillows in there as well, but that's the extent of it. I did a video somewhat recently, it was probably like six months ago now, I don't know, where I cleaned the entire thing out because I realized that if something got shoved all the way to the back of that closet, it might as well not exist because it's just way too hard to get to. So I try to just keep things up toward the front. This cabinet here is where I store extra quilts, blankets, and the bottom two drawers, there are sheets. And then I also keep sheets at the foot of my bed. So that's where we keep all that extra stuff. I do have two baskets for Legos downstairs, or these are actually Duplos. The younger boys really like to play with Duplos. They use them a ton. I like keeping them on the main level because they make their way everywhere outside. They play them on the trampoline. This way I can easily put them back. The top drawer of this, it's kind of random, but it became my currently not using electronic things like baby monitors because I still plan to use them. And then I have a couple of other cameras and things that I need to set back up that I used to have set up. But I'm just not ready to get rid of them because I actually still really want to use them. And then over here in the living room, I just briefly showed you a very messy looking spot, but I actually really like having it all collected together. It's my kids' Bible studies and Awana books. That's where they go on a little shelf and hooks. And then I have this armoire. We bought it from the previous owner of this house. I keep homeschool supplies. And then in the top drawer there, I had some curtain accessories that go with the curtains in this room. I do have a couple of random things in there that I just don't know where to put, but I'm not ready to get rid of. I try not to keep too much of that stuff, but there is always a little bit of it. And then we have our downstairs bookshelf, which is the top shelves of the hutch. Now the hutch, used to be for this was actually a dining room when we first moved in that's what the original owners had it we lived with that for a couple years and we had china up there and then i thought oh no now that i'm making it a living room we probably need to get rid of it and i instead decided to make it a bookshelf and i really like it as a bookshelf in this room so that way i have a place on the bottom level to stash books again so i'm not constantly running upstairs for the things that we like to keep, I like to have somewhere to put them on both levels. Do you spy my half finished curtain project? I actually recently posted on a local Facebook page to find someone who wants to finish it up for me. I feel that I was a little too ambitious thinking I could get all eight of those panels done in any time frame that is soon. So I'm calling in reinforcements on my curtain project. I finished three panels, loved how they turned out and then lost all motivation for the rest. I wanna say I don't have the time, but really I'm just just not currently finding the time. That's the honest truth. Okay, this is our mud room. This room is a workhorse. I've shared it a ton. I organize it on here. We have bins for everybody's shoes. We have mine and Luke's shoes on the bottom drawers. We have life jackets in there and then bins at the top. My daughter recently relabeled them so that there's a towel bin, a swimsuit bin, a random other swim stuff like goggles, sunscreen, that kind of stuff. We reevaluate this room a lot because we use it so much that we really need it to function. And there is just only so minimal you can be with a family of nine, almost 10, when it comes to shoes and coats and hats. So we do the seasonal swap out. So that way, right now it's swim gear. And then in the winter, it is the coats, the hats, and all of that stuff. On the very top bin, the non-seasonal stuff. And then I also do have a bin in the basement for the non-seasonal stuff. Kind of random, but I have a hair and makeup bin under the bed. It has ponytail holders, clips, blow dryer, straightener, brushes. This is just a spot that I started a while ago. I guess you get creative when there's just not that much space. So we don't have a big bathroom closet or any closets really for that matter. And so I have lots of baskets storing things and then I just try to keep things really minimal. Speaking of that, this side of the armoire is where I keep all of my clothes. Then Luke keeps his on the right. And then he also has the blue dresser just because honestly, he has more clothes than me. I really like being minimal. I like to reach in and just have a few things. So I also do swap things out. I have a bin under the bed that has my winter clothes. I have a, a basket that has Theodore's clothes. And then I have another basket with the clothes for the newborn. So under the bed be becomes one of my favorite storage places from my seasonal clothes. And then there's even a few dresses in there that I didn't think I'd wear this summer because I'm so pregnant. 
but I think that I will wear next summer. So it has off season stuff as well as dresses for next year. And that's the extent of my clothes. I don't have any other clothes down in the basement. I have the two bottom drawers of the armoire, the one side of the armoire, which I showed you, and then this bin. And I just get rid of things I don't like because to me, it is more worth it to pass them along and not have to worry about having a messy room. I do have this basket full of baby carriers and it's a little excessive. The other day I was looking through it thinking, okay, there's a ring sling, there is a woven wrap, there is this beautiful carrier by Secura Bloom. I was looking through them, trying to give them a really critical eye and I couldn't even think of one to get rid of. So I'm just gonna keep them. It's gonna be this overflowing basket because I like baby wraps. <laughs> Again, this is random, but the top drawer of my my nightstand has headphones and then all of the magazines that Pharmasa and Boone has been featured in. I don't know why I started putting them there, but I did. And that's just what we're sticking with. I don't want to put them down in the basement because I think at one point I did have them in the basement and our basement's not a place you want to store a lot of stuff because it can get a little bit moist in there. And we have a dehumidifier running, but I've had things that I've really wanted to keep that have gotten damaged. And so I prefer to store what I can if it's important to me upstairs. Now, Luke has a basket on his side and I'm not going to open his drawer because I think it's just shoved full of books. The bottom basket looks empty. So I'm like, maybe I should just put more baby wraps over there. It's It looks like it's up for grabs. I have no idea if this home tour is going to be perceived as actually a minimal home tour. Thinking about putting minimal-ish on the thumbnail because I... Again, I really see the value in minimalism. I see how having less possessions in inventory to care for throughout your home makes your life literally better. And that is what I strive for. There's always going to be more things that we have in here that make their way in that I, for whatever reason thought was a good idea to bring in that I'm going to need to declutter but it is a constant goal of mine. You may have noticed whenever I was doing the mudroom tour that there was a trash bag by the back door. There's always a trash bag by the back door to bring up to the local thrift shop because even though this is my goal, you know, you convince yourself that certain things would be necessary and you bring them in and then realize that you actually would rather have the space in your home. And it's a constant reevaluation. I will say, that the more you declutter and minimize and simplify your space, the less money you spend on random things because you start to just realize that you don't want to store it. And more than just what I like this item, you think, do I want to store this item? Do I want to shuffle things around to accommodate this item? Dust it, care for it. There's always something you have to do for each thing in your home. It's a constant process, but worth striving for. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new and you like homemaking content, I make a lot of it here. So I'd love to have you following along. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse. Mm -hmm.